In January 2016, two teenagers from Nashville, Tennessee, named Logan Stevenson and J.D. Bryan attended a drinking party. There was a questionable concoction being handed out called Dushine. Attendees at the party noted that Logan and J.D. both drank the most Dushine out of everyone. The two exhibited signs of drunkenness and intoxication, as goes with excessive drinking. The next day, Logan Stevenson was found dead in his bedroom. J.D. Bryan died just a few days later. The Dushine concoction they drank was a mixture of Mountain Dew and methanol, also known as racing fuel. How did the two teens die and why? But first, a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Blinkist. Okay, so you clicked on this video because you were curious about what happens when you drink a poisonous substance, right? Don't worry, I was curious too, that's why I made the video. But honestly, this video is just the surface of an ocean of chemistry knowledge. If you really want to learn more about chemistry or similar fields like forensic chemistry, Blinkist is a great tool for the job. Blinkist has a collection of over 5,000 nonfiction titles and condenses the content into easy text and audio explainers called Blinks. I found a Blink that fits both my chemistry and forensic interest. The Poisoner's Handbook is an 18-minute discussion on New York City's first toxicologist in the 1920s, and his investigations into a slew of mysterious poisonings in the city. But Blinkist isn't just about science. There's topics on business, cooking, history, true crime, and more. There's over 27 categories to choose from. I guarantee you'll find something. Right now, Blinkist has a special offer just for my audience. Click the link in my description to start your free 7-day trial with Blinkist and get 25% off a premium membership. Try it today and learn something new. Methanol is a member of the alcohol family. It's a single carbon atom bound to three hydrogen atoms and a hydroxyl group. In contrast, the alcohol molecule in alcoholic drinks is called ethanol, which is similar in structure. Methanol tastes and feels similar to ethanol. It has nearly the same physical properties, characteristic burn, similar smell, and even causes intoxication. Yet the way the body breaks it down is much different from ethanol. Methanol itself is not dangerous, but it's what your body converts it to that is. Both alcohol molecules go through two metabolic conversions. Ethanol is converted into acetaldehyde and then acetic acid. Acetaldehyde is harmful to the body, but acetic acid is not, so damage is reduced as it's metabolized. In contrast, methanol is converted into formaldehyde, which is literally embalming fluid. Not the best thing for your body unless you're already dead. Remember when I said acetaldehyde is converted into something less toxic? Well, that doesn't happen with formaldehyde. In fact, it's made into something even more toxic, formic acid. Formic acid is deadly because it inhibits the cytochrome C oxidase enzyme, or the COX enzyme, in mitochondria. As you know, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It makes the molecule ATP so the cell can use it for energy and live. ATP is specifically made by the COX enzyme, and when formic acid binds to the COX enzyme, it prevents the production of ATP. The mitochondria is essentially turned off, the cell gets no ATP, and dies. Except for your red blood cells, every cell in your body has mitochondria, so all your cells are affected by formic acid poisoning. Think of the mitochondria in your muscle cells, like your diaphragm and heart, and nerve cells in your brain, all being turned off. It's easy to see how formic acid can be so deadly. Methanol cannot be distinguished from ethanol, so you wouldn't know if you were drinking it. This is one reason why drinking bootleg moonshine is dangerous. As methanol is made along with the ethanol in the fermentation process, it has to be distilled to remove it from the solution. Only problem is, if it's not properly removed or checked for its presence, you would never know. The first signs of poisoning in the teens would have been muscle tremors, due to shutdown of skeletal muscle. Formic acid would decrease the pH of the blood, making it acidic. The body would respond to this by increasing breathing to exhale carbon dioxide from the blood in an attempt to make it less acidic. All the while this is happening, muscle tissue is slowing down, the most crucial muscles being the heart and diaphragm. The final stage of methanol poisoning is brain death, as the brain shuts down due to lack of ATP. The lethal dose of methanol is about 100 milliliters, or one third of a can of beer and takes, on average, about 12 hours to cause death. Aside from death, there is another terrible effect that can result from drinking methanol, blindness. This doesn't make sense though. Methanol is a poison, and poisons kill you. So how can you be blind if you're already dead? The average dose necessary for methanol-induced blindness is about 10 to 15 milliliters, pretty small. 
In most cases of methanol poisoning, people die instead of going blind. This is because when people drink, they typically have more than just 10 to 15 milliliters of alcohol. One of the largest incidents of methanol-induced blindness was in the Canary Islands in 1963. A local winemaker named Rogelio Aguiar tried to cut costs by using methanol as a substitute for ethanol in his wine. After a lengthy investigation, it was determined that 51 deaths and 5 cases of blindness were linked to the tainted wine. Deaths were estimated to be as high as 1,000, but could not be directly linked. But how does methanol cause blindness after all? Well, say you drink a small amount that is not a lethal dose. The methanol is converted into formic acid, as you know, and will move around your body via blood circulation. If it reaches the optic nerve in your eye, formic acid will shut down the mitochondria in the nerve cells, and the optic nerve dies. The job of the optic nerve is to send electrical impulses to the brain to signal what you're seeing. With a dead optic nerve, there's no signal transmission, and you're now blind. Nerve cells cannot regenerate like skin cells or liver cells. Luckily, if given enough time, there is a cure for methanol poisoning. Booze. <laughs> Shot of liquor. Yes, the cure for methanol poisoning is ethanol, whether it be wine, beer, or liquor. Ethanol counteracts methanol because it's a competitive binding agent with the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase. This means in the presence of methanol and ethanol, alcohol dehydrogenase will preferentially bind to ethanol due to its attractive molecular structure. With ethanol taking up all the binding sites for methanol, formaldehyde is not produced. No formaldehyde means no formic acid, and the mitochondria in your cells carries on as normal. The unmetabolized methanol is then excreted into the urine, and it all works out. So there you have it. Don't drink bootleg moonshine unless it's been tested for methanol. And racing fuel, well, that's for cars. And ethanol is meant for you. Drink responsibly. And while you're at it, subscribe too. Thanks for watching.